Hi everyone, this is Kyle. I just wanted to take a quick second to welcome all of our new listeners who found us through the Portland Retro Games Expo. We had a great time meeting with you this past weekend, and thank you for finding and listening to the show. Hope you enjoy it. Is that how trains sound? Are all trains juggalos? Well, I'm going to talk about eco-terrorism. Got too excited about jorts. I'm leaving now with my Roomba or your blood on my hands. I'm back. Back on my bullshit. What is meme if not air horn persevering? No, this is this is not a family show. And I quote, many American titties. Why'd you have to bring Dane Cook to this, Andrew? No one wanted that. Oh, you guys are not ready for what I've got today. <laughs> and I've apparently hit the very end of my attention span. Give me like 30 seconds, I'm looking for rhymes. Hello and welcome to Debate This, the show where no one is right, but someone is definitely wrong. In this show, we take time out of our busy adult lives to talk about comic books, video games, and how the Overwatch 2 launch was very successful and everyone loves it and is unilaterally satisfied with the final product. No further questions. I can't wait to take a sip out of my coffee and read the reviews <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <sighs> Matt, it's not that anything? bad, I say, as I just logged mm. into a game I've put over a thousand hours on and have, mm, yeah. I don't know, 12 of 35 available heroes. I've already put in one third of the time on Splatoon 3 in the last three weeks <laughs> that I have in Overwatch in the last three years. Anyway, let's insert a train whistle here. Whoop, whoop. It's week three. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that how trains sound? Are oh, all trains yeah. juggalos? <laughs> <laughs> all trains are juggalos, but not all not juggalos, all juggalos are trains. trains. <laughs> oh my god. There's our episode title. It's week three of the Spooktacular Express, everyone, and we're pulling out of a red and blue station built on late 90s nostalgia and cheap knockoff games into a black and white station built on mid-2000s nostalgia and even cheapier cheaper knockoffier games <laughs> cheapier knockoffier games N nailed it perfect mm -hmm. no notes yep. <laughs> just like the overwatch 2 release <laughs> <laughs> perfect and not at all delayed october is debate this is closest thing to sweeps week and so in true sweeps week fashion we're pulling from the vault of what we know gets the proverbial podcast audience butts in the proverbial podcatcher seats. And that's Flash Games, baby. Is that true? I don't, I, <laughs> yeah, I would like to see your research, please. It isn't not true. <laughs> but I think it is not true. <laughs> Can you prove that? Do you have any evidence of Wait. that? I could pull up our analytics, but I don't want to. Do you have three peer-reviewed sources? <laughs> yeah, I don't see the citation in the notes, but that's fine. Listeners, longtime listeners of DT may remember that way back in February of last year, this year, 2021, <laughs> three whole years, years ago. ago <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, we did <laughs> we did an episode titled "The Fussy and the Furious," where we pitched ways to turn beloved flash games like Kitten Cannon and I Saw Her Standing There into long-form television series. <laughs> I don't know why we do the things that we do, but regardless... Because it's a weekly show and we need topics. <laughs> we, got, we need content. So today, I've brought the team back together to pull once more from that bottomless well, but this time spooky. <laughs> hey, speaking of spooky, how about some quick, shameless self-promotion? Hey, you probably like our content. You're listening to it, and we can assume that you either A, intended to, or B, your podcast app automatically went down to the next episode in your queue, and you haven't been able to get to your phone yet and change it. Well, if the former applies to you, and you don't already subscribe to the show, may I interest you in our Patreon page at patreon.com slash debate this cast. It's like the show you're listening to right now for free, but instead, you can pay us five bucks a month. <laughs> and doesn't, and doesn't paying for things make them all the better? Also, also, by doing so, you will get yourself a sweet custom link to the Debate This premium feed, which includes ad-free episodes of Debate This, an invite to our exclusive Discord server, and access to our exclusive year D&D Real Play podcast, The Office Drones. Plus, plus, also, if you sign up in October, we'll even send you an extra special gift that may or may not be Halloween-themed, some supplies may vary. <laughs> I feel like you did this in reverse. You said all the good stuff they get at the end, and yeah. then you started with, here's the episode, but you just pay us instead of the thing. <laughs> yeah, I think 
I've never once said that I'm good at capitalism, but I feel mm-hmm. like you did a bad capitalism. I think I did fine. <laughs> I think all capitalism is bad now that I think about it. So whatever. I think Andrew has the most marketing adjacent job of all of us. Yeah. And I have the most jaded adjacent. Yes. <laughs> adjacent. The Jason. No. Okay, but honestly, if you can't swing five bucks a month, we get it. That's okay too. A completely and totally free way to support our show that may very well just be auto playing after today's episode of the Daily is to review our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, or any other podcatcher app of your choice. So if you screenshot the review, tag us on social media at Debate This Cast, we will read your review in a very much not ASMR voice during our ad breaks. <laughs> <laughs> we promise. More importantly, if we get 20 new reviews, that's 20 new reviews by the end of October or November, we'll force Wait. Todd to play Doki Doki <laughs> Literature Club. One more time, we're going to force Todd to play Doki Doki Literature Club on stream. And it's going to be so good. Please help make this happen. Please, I beg you. That said, let's get into it. Can we put the current review number on the board, please? <laughs> the current review number is three. Okay, we need 17 more reviews. <laughs> we might extend this to November. Because well, what you we need really to do is need actually to say, say and no, you need to say, oh no, we need number. More reviews <laughs> to hit 20 because it could change by the time this episode Yeah, goes. go ahead and do that. I'll give you a clean one. Mm-hmm. By the end of the month, we need 17. More reviews to get to 20. So please help us do that. Anyway, as every podcaster in the world has said, let's get into it. It's time to step off this train into this low poly rainforest cafe filled with stick figures and spelling errors. <laughs> I've pulled together lead flash historians Todd X Mortis Thomas, Matt Ghostscape 2 The Cabin, Cole, <laughs> and Kyle The Binding of Isaac Harper. To come together and pitch me a way to turn a flash game into a slasher flick right in time for Halloween. Can I ask a question real quick? Yeah, one. And good, it's only one. Andrew, <laughs> yeah. are you sponsored by Rainforest Cafe? You have to tell us. <laughs> you bring up Rainforest Cafe more than anyone else I know, period. Well, we made the joke, we made the bit that uh Spooktacular Express only stops at Rainforest Cafes. That's fair. Okay. It's canon then. It's canon. It's in the it's in the wiki. I would also like to ask my everybody gets one question. Mm-hmm. I can't draw the line between our nicknames. What yeah. are the nicknames? So this one's fun. These are all horror games that appeared on Newgrounds.com. Oh, that oh, was okay. fun. I didn't That's know fun. Binding yeah. of Isaac was on Newgrounds. Right. That's the fun trivia is Binding of Isaac was originally created in Flash. Now, it wasn't launched on Newgrounds, but you could play a free demo in mm. 2011. <laughs> the, and that was released by Ed McMullen and the other guy whose name I can't remember. Uh, released <laughs> the same day that they released the original version on Steam. The original Flash game. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Yeah. All right. Well, as we identified Kyle last didn't year, ask his one question. I, I'm holding it. I'm keeping it in oh, the pocket. Okay. <laughs> That's smart. That's smart. All right. Now, as we identified last year, Flash games seem to be a veritable bottomless well of content. And everyone seems to have at least a few that they remember very fondly playing either in computer lab or while talking to friends on AOL Instant Messenger. So let's bottle that nostalgia and throw it to the proverbial fire in the form of a knife-wielding psychopath. In no great detail, give me your elevator pitch for a kitschy slasher flick based on a beloved Flash game. What's the overall plot, main characters, and most likely punny title? Start with Todd. Yeah, love to. Here he goes. (laughs) There's only so much hot cocoa that can be consumed and the slopes (laughs) are calling me, says our protagonist, Skeeter Freeman, radical coming-of-age skier (laughs) to his friends. See you all at the bottom. Last one there is buying the next round of hot cocoa, which I'm realizing I do not know what is served at ski lodges. I just assume (laughs) it's always hot cocoa. Anyway, not the point. Skeeter uh, takes off with his friends. It is then that you realize you're being chased down the mountain, down Radical Mountain, because that's the name of the mountain. You realize you're being chased down Radical Mountain by a lumbering monster with claws like knives. You slalom and french fry, but never pizza yourself away from the (laughs) checkpoint as you see Chad get picked off and drug away. Trail of red snow following. Welcome to Skeeter Freeman's Nightmare, 
a slasher facelift to the classic game Ski Free, starring Skeeter Freeman, Chad, Susan, Thad, Chad, a third Chad, Lisa, and Julius. And so this game that I'm pitching you, and it's very good, it will be appropriately titled Ski to Freedom, but the two is made up of giant bloody Sasquatch claws because Ooh, yeah, that's they're good. bloody sla- Sasquatch claws, and it's the sequel to Ski Free, I guess, kind of. Important question. In the mm-hmm. animation of the logo, does the Sasquatch scratch the two in there? I like any thought that gets claws to come through the screen to okay. you. Okay. I can be sold one way or another. This is all pixelated. So I'm mm-hmm. thinking that giving a third... Uh, <laughs> Adding any complexity is going to be too yeah. much for your pixel technology. Uh, yeah. Both different and less than I thought. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, Todd, are you doing a 2D animated pixel slasher movie? Yeah, it's all going to be animated yeah. like that one episode of Community. If you've played Ski Free, it's all pixelated over mm-hmm. the top. I don't know what it what, sure is. I'm aware what Ski that. Free is, but <laughs> okay, we're yeah, making then. a movie, right? Also pixelated, not Flash, but I guess we can fly I was, by I was that. making a Flash game. I didn't read it, but now it's a Flash game movie. It's a movie I'm pitching to you. It's pixelated. <laughs> cool. So Todd did the homework. Uh, one question, <laughs> one important question. Yeah. Uh, you you specifically called out French frying, but not pizzaing. And yeah. just to be ch- <laughs> and Matt, correct, correct my math here, but French frying is slowing down, right? No, French frying no. is or going French fast. Is... Pizza okay, okay. is slowing down. Is slowing down. Yeah, okay. That's why French that's fry why... pizza. Ah, yeah, I'm that's sure helpful. the visual, visual aids will come across great on the audio podcast. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> that's you. why Skeeter Thank Freeman, you. the protagonist of our movie that I've made today, okay. will only be French <laughs> frying and fry. not pizzaing. But Todd, I was told if you French fry when you should have pizza, you're gonna have a bad time. He did the thing. Oh, you can only French fry to get away from the Sasquatch. <laughs> it's right behind you. In this pixelated movie. <laughs> Please go to the next person. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Matt. All right, Andrew. First off, I'm really glad that we all wrote scripts today. Um, even sure though did. Todd wrote a script to a game. <laughs> so, I won't lie to you. I've been pretty lost in the proverbial sauce of MCU content <laughs> lately. Sure. Now, I know, I know there are more production companies than just Marvel Studios. And don't worry. I didn't come to pitch you a superhero slasher today. I just thought that it was important for me to acknowledge that my deep dive into the MCU deep end has me spending a lot of time thinking about time travel, multiversal travel, and the implications thereof. Okay, so <laughs> wow. now that you're in my headspace, allow me- I'm never to, in your headspace. <laughs> allow me to transport you to a trailer. It's the last day of classes before spring break at Community College University. A small liberal (laughs) arts college in Nowheresville, Midwest, USA. Camera pan from a sunny day outside to the chalkboard where the words metaphysics and predestination, can we control the time of alternate universes, are written above a book called The Philosophy of Time Travel, an updated textbook by Dr. Roberta Sparrow. We hear the woman at the front of the class giving a lecture, but that fades as the oneer continues around the room, and we spot our sexy teens, TM, who will be our protagonists (laughs) in this mind-melting psychological thriller. (laughs) We pan to a redheaded senior in the back of the room, and we see on her phone screen a listicle entitled, 10 Best Spots to Get Sexy and Sloppy in Fort Myers, Florida. She clicks the share button as we pan to the phones of three other students pinging with the message. Suddenly, a class bell, which super exists at this fictional college, rings and we hear the professor say, Remember, everyone, I'll be accepting your optional essays on examples of predestination as it pertains to our reality the day after break. If you collect empirical evidence of temporal manipulation on your assorted spring break musings, I'll submit your work to the student's activity officer and the registrar so they can award you your integrative studies credit for the semester. In case it helps, my book is still available in the bookstore and you may find it helpful while on break. (laughs) Why is that necessary? (laughs) As we see the group of students open the classroom door and walk through, it seamlessly cuts to the same students deplaning on the picturesque tarmac of the Southwest Florida International Airport. As the students and others who we've yet to meet but are also from the same class exit the plane, we start to hear screams over the sound of laughing 
high-fiving, and general airport noises. We see a girl who just got off the plane, headphones on over her orange hoodie, walk absent-mindedly towards the plane's turbine. Everyone screams in horror as she breaks into a sprint and leaps into the turbine engine, spraying the students with blood. (laughs) Rapid cuts of a student walking into the ocean until his head is beneath the waves. Another leaping from a hotel balcony, and a third screaming and crying as she walks towards the camera. All perfectly synced to a slow down, minor key version of 1996 ska punk anthem, Wrong Way. (laughs) Good. Finally, a cut to black and the sounds of someone laughing. From the studio that brought you the Final Destination series and the drugs that brought you Donnie Darko comes (laughs) Sublime, a thriller based on 2006 flash game Line Rider. This October, (laughs) there will be lines in the sand and on the tables. But there'll be lines of blood. <laughs> Good. No notes. What was the what was the <laughs> game's name again? The game's name is Line Rider. I've never heard of Line Rider. You've never heard of Line Rider? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, big big Line Rider fan over here. What's the what's the movie's <laughs> name? <laughs> the movie's name is Sublime. It's really good. Thank because you. the wrong way, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This Andrew, is for me. I got you it. You have yeah. definitely at least seen the video of like a stick figure going across lines set to like in the hall of the mountain king or beethoven's fifth or something i honestly never saw this i just looked it up while you were talking because i had never heard of it i've never seen that in my entire life i don't know how i just never have that is impressive honestly that yeah. you don't feel what line writer is feels almost impossible yeah yeah well i'm doing a line writer movie cool <laughs> it's <Love> called it. <laughs> sublime it's 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 a flash game, so you got that over, Todd. Um, how about you, well, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have it over me that's a flash game. He has it over me that he read your directions. That he and read it's a movie. movie. I said yeah. what I said. Starring real people, and it's not <laughs> pixelated. Mine's still a pixelated movie. I stand by this. I will stick the landing. Okay. Kyle, you know. All right. <laughs> Do your script. <laughs> Quentin Watterson is your typical all-american high school popular kid only a junior in high school he's your star quarterback he has rich parents high school sweetheart etc etc uh what really makes him stand out though is his mildly successful youtube channel overpowered but with no vowels in it because it's youtube that is built a brand around quentin's lifestyle and specifically his ever escalating series of pranks which he always signs off the same way like and share (laughs) qwop however When a new track star transfers to Midwest High, it seems Quentin's star might not shine as bright as he thought. Not only is this new kid, Bennett, setting all sorts of new records on the track, but after a video of him standing up to Quentin and one of his pranks goes viral, Quentin hatches a plan to even the score. With his crew, his posse of football lackeys, and hidden cameras, (laughs) Quentin leads Bennett to drop off point on Halloween night with the plan to scare him and use the footage to humiliate his new rival. But the scare goes wrong, and a horrid turn of events, Bennett takes a tumble off of drop-off point into the river below. Quentin deletes the footage of the prank gone wrong, swears his crew to secrecy, and shuts down his YouTube channel. Bennett's body is never found, and his death is declared a suicide with no outside evidence. Next October, one year later, Quentin's life is going great. (laughs) He is now captain of the football team. He was just named homecoming king, et cetera, et cetera. Montage of positive high school experiences. Uh, No one expects he is in any way tied to Bennett's disappearance. And in fact, he is asked to speak at the suicide awareness rally at the school held in Bennett's honor or whatever. Quentin gives a great speech about seeking help, shutting down his YouTube channel when it starts to affect his mental health, etc etc and he cues a video he prepared in the style of his old youtube channel to close the rally as a like treat to his fans however what plays is not the video quentin prepared but the footage of bennett being startled by a masked figure who the audience knows as quentin and falling off of drop off point before the masked figure unmasks themselves the video cuts and quentin's planned video resumes right at the sign off like and share qwop Then, in stunned silence as the light comes up, a body falls from the rafters, its limbs twisted and broken. (laughs) It's it's one of Quentin's lackeys, who was the the one running the camera that night of the fatal accident. Beyond the disfigured limbs, there is one more injury to the body, 
Carved into the lackey's chest are the four letters of Quentin's signature sign-off, QWOP. School is canceled the next day for the day, and the students go home for a long Indigenous Peoples Day weekend. While walking home, Quentin f- hears a faint sound behind him. Quap. But turns around <laughs> to see nothing. He keeps walking and hears it this time louder. Quap. And he turns around again and sees nothing. He takes out his phone to FaceTime his sweetheart when he hears it right in his ear this time. Quap. And as the front <laughs> camera on his phone turns on, into the screen behind him, he sees the image of a mangled, waterlogged body struggling to use its twisted, broken limbs to lurch and jerk towards Quentin. Excellent. Simultaneously, Quentin whips around to defend himself as his sweetheart picks up, and once again, there's nothing behind him. Quentin finishes his walk home, obviously shaken, and goes into his room to pull out his filming equipment that he hasn't touched since the night of the prank gone wrong. He checks to make sure that he the... SD card in the camera is indeed clear of the incriminating video, and he is shocked to find only one file remaining on the SD card, dated to one week after the incident at drop-off point. He hits play on the video, and the image of the cliff at drop-off point appears. The video plays for a few seconds, when the same disfigured body he saw in his phone's camera slowly, painfully, uses its mangled legs to thrust its body into view. Like it was being manipulated by someone who didn't quite know how to work the controls. Quentin is horrified to see Bennett's dead expressionless eyes turn to face the camera. His broken jaw twists to form the words, Like and share. Quap. As the video ends, it deletes itself from Quentin's computer. Quentin is left terrified in his room. Terrified. By what he saw. This Halloween, don't walk, run to the theater to witness the horror event of the year, Quap. Based on the Flash game. Woo. Wow. Kyle. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to just start here. In the 10 year of debate, this and the five plus years we've been doing this, we've had a lot of long walks to short <laughs> drinks of water. Right. Yep. This has to be the longest walk to the shortiest drink of water. Mm, I don't think it's I don't think it's as long a walk as there's a snake in my boots. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> not a snake in my boots. It's Sorry. Kyle, I didn't look at either your or Matt's prompts like to see what you were going for. And partway through I'm listening, I'm like, what is Kyle doing? Yeah. And that was right before you went. Quap. And I was like, oh, I, I get it. I, I saw Todd's look when he like, read ahead and he like it, it hit him. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good. Wow. These are, I mean, all right. Well, well done. I am excited to see, honestly, all three of these play out. These are always the episodes that we all mm-hmm. come to play. It's yeah. the, the dumber the episode, the, dumber. the harder we come to play. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Friday the 13th saw horny teenagers being punished for having premarital sex. I Know What You Did Last Summer saw horny teenagers being punished for accessory to murder and also premarital sex. And the Texas Chainsaw Massacre saw horny teenagers being punished for picking up a hitchhiker and also probably premarital sex. My point is, a good slasher flick acts as an allegory for the dangers of scary youth culture. So I want each of you to give me an in-depth analysis of your killer, capital K Killer, and of the thing for which the sexy teens TM they are pursuing are being hunted. Yeah, so everyone, or at least most people, I think, are all too familiar with the Sasquatch killer of Ski Free. Like, this is not a new concept. It is an established yeah. character that haunts our dreams, frankly. Checks out. It checks out, yeah. honestly. Yeah. <laughs> what no one knows is the reason why the Sasquatch killer is so bloodthirsty. Well, this big killer sasquatch monster from my movie that i have made for you today wants these disrespectful kids off its hill which honestly seems pretty fair the more i think about it but specifically its intentions its rage is fueled by the disrespect these youths have been giving to the fresh pow (laughs) of radical mountain so (laughs) even when these youths are told early on by the curmudgeonly old man who maintains the gnar that these kids are on that when he tells them they should quit their vaping and their party drugs, <laughs> and their Ouija boards, and whatever it is the kids are getting into, these Zoomers, uh, led by Skeeter Freeman, refuse. And that is 
ultimately what fuels the logical rage of the mountain monster because it only longs to spill the blood of disrespectful teens. In my mind, the scene where the monster breaks bad is it like steps out of the woods and it just sees all the things that I described scattered in a pile like vape cartridges and Ouija boards, I guess. I don't know. It sheds one single tear. Yeah, and then it then it like it like <laughs> picks up a vape cartridge and it like smashes it and its eyes yeah. go red. And that's that's my answer to your question. But I also want to add, as I put this premise together, it kind of felt like I was making a more sinister elf on the shelf situation. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this sounds like the kind of thing like once your kids have outgrown elf on the shelf or they find out it's a lie, sorry, spoiler, mm-hmm. then this seems like the thing you're like, oh well, I, I heard you were vaping. You don't you don't want the killer Sasquatch monster to come <laughs> murder you. The you? vape yeti? Are you <laughs> the fucking vape yeti? <laughs> He's coming for your jewels. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me type, type uh, vape yeti in here real just, quick. Just make sure that's that's on the wiki. Um, oh, oh, yeah, no. that's, that's really funny. <laughs> He's coming for your jewels. <laughs> Oh, oh that's okay. Incredible. We're really getting to this. There's like three episodes now. We need to establish a rule where if somebody else comes up with a cooler pitch than your pitch, yeah. it doesn't get to count. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I want. I don't have anything else to add other than Vape Yeti is teenage elf on the shelf. He's coming for your jewels. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Wow. It's really stupid. Um... <laughs> Matt, try to try to outdo yourself, I guess. Oh man, <laughs> I don't know that I can. Okay, that was a bump set and spike by us three. I appreciate sure what we did was. here. Okay, you've seen the slighted nerd that despises the characters cooler than them trope, right? Like we've all seen a serial killer who like kills the sexy teens because they're yeah. sexy teens. The sexual assault at the end of Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we've we've all been there. Well, wait, just wait until that slighted nerd is all grown up and believes the sexy teens and their sexy teenness are what caused the slighted nerd's life to fall apart. So I'm going to tell you right now up front, because this is the pitch of the movie, the villain was the sexy redheaded teen all along, but the sexy redheaded teen we're following doesn't know the real villain Andrew is the sexy redheaded teen from an alternate reality in the future now remember this is a timey wimey (laughs) wait isn't this the plot of Gossip Girl isn't this what Kyle told us the other day (laughs) it was this is almost Knights of the Old Republic (laughs) I would like to point out that again all I know about Gossip Girl is the go piss girl (laughs) (laughs) I don't know anything else about that property so Here's the thing, right? We set up in the very beginning, and you'll be able to learn more through an audio book downloadable as a PDF (laughs) from our movie (laughs) website. This whole thing is about metaphysics and predestination. It turns out that there has been a discovery that allows people to alter the lines that people need to follow... In reality, they can become the line writer of these line writers. So, Andrew. Okay, that was my question. Is it is one line writer with a W and then the other is line writer, R-I-D-E-R. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh Uh-huh. Thank you for clarifying that. So, the whole thing, right, is that this spring break trip already happened. What we're watching in the movie (laughs) is actually... That was Todd pretending that his head was exploding. He didn't make a sound. So nobody got it if you weren't on this call right then. So actually, the spring break already happened. And what we're watching is a splintered reality being rewritten by the main character in the future who on this spring break trip had her life ruined. And now her life 30 years down the road isn't what she expected it to be. And she finds this opportunity 
to rewrite her history and the lines that she followed <laughs> to get to her life. However, the future sexy redheaded teen does not actually change her own lines. She changed the lines of everybody else and begins to punish those who she feels wronged her in some sick, twisted Final Destination, Donnie Darko, timey-wimey shit <laughs> by making them all kill themselves. <laughs> they kill them with their lines, they make them die, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's it. That's the villain. She's punishing sexy teens for okay. their sexy teen mistakes. Matt, I think you just did the butterfly effect. Ashton Kutcher vehicle, the butterfly <laughs> effect. Mm. This isn't far from the butterfly <laughs> effect. It's not the butterfly effect. It is yeah. definitively not the butterfly effect, but it's... It, it is legally distinct from the butterfly <laughs> effect. Hey, do you guys remember the butterfly effect? That was a pretty pretty weird movie, how he strangled himself in the womb to end the whole thing. Yeah, yeah that, that, was a, that movie that was, was a weird. Movie. Yeah, it, look, I really liked that movie when I was 16, so there you go. <laughs> right. And you're really going to like this movie when you're now. <laughs> 16. <laughs> Great. Uh, Kyle. All right, Andrew. So we all know the best horror antagonists are a foil to our protagonist. So in this case, our antagonist is the dead, shuffling body of Bennett to our hero, Quentin, or our flawed hero, Quentin, let's say. The difference really comes in here during Bennett's um, takedown of Quentin after the first prank that like he calls him out on, that viral video that shames Quentin into pranking and killing Bennett. So the, what the mor movie is really gonna moralize here is a lot of like anti-social media, the dangers of social media and like influencer culture and a little bit of good old fashioned like cell phone bad moralizing. Mm -hmm. It's a Gen Z horror film. It's a Gen Z f horror film. Sure All from is. our our like our new kid in town. He's, you know, he's good at the same things that uh Quentin is, but he doesn't show off about it. He's just he's just naturally cool and good at things. Mm -hmm. Um and then to really drive the point home, we're going to see a lot of shots of Quentin like constantly on his phone checking his posts checking his numbers but bennett before he dies only has a flip phone that's the how we're really going to drive home our message of like social media bad embrace tradition return to normalcy that is the core of our moralizing in this movie. Okay. all right that's very conservative very consistently conservative message it is. Are we are we both doing the scare yeah. the kids straight movie, Kyle? Is that what we did? Yeah, that's all. Horror I mean, movies. that's every like, slasher movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're doing the thing. You're doing the thing very well. Well, so talking about slasher flick tropes, we've got our villain. Now we need the other side of the coin. Every slasher flick needs its hero, the virgin sexy teen who gets away, or the scrappy sexy teen who stands and fights back the killer to send them back to the lake or hell or the shadow dimension or whatever. Your Jamie's Lee Curtis's, your Nev's, <laughs> your your Nev's Campbell, right? <laughs> so, talk me through the dramatic climax of your film. Who is left alive, and how do they stand up and fight back against the killer? How do they triumph against evil, Todd? Well, I'll make it clear. It's the the thing that kills the the killer. It's not these dang kids. Most of which will in fact <laughs> perish. I want to just get that out there. We can only count on the man of the mountain who I've named Eustace Mountainman, who, <laughs> who Eustace, Eustace keeps these trails safe. And, you know, Eustace can only clean up so many discarded vape cartridges and Ouija boards and hoverboards off this here radical mountain. He doesn't clean them up fast enough to, to keep the, the Yeti at bay, so, but he is the hero that saves the day. And as the most sexy of the teens do perish in the movie, it ends with Eustace Mountain Men defeating the Sasquatch using a technique passed down from generation to generation of Mountain Men's, which is, of course, stabbing it in the chest with an ice pick. It is the ice pick that he, <laughs> he does indeed keep in his pocket to chisel the frozen gum off the ski lifts. And uh, we see the, the, the Sasquatch get chiseled in the chest as it plummets off the side of Radical Mountain, presumably dead. The end question mark. The end question mark. <laughs> good. Good. You want me to say Eustace Mountain Men again? I was pretty proud of that one. It's good. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good about it. That's what counts. Uh, Matt, how about you? So act three of our movie 
is a bloodbath. Everyone <laughs> who went on this spring break trip is dead, except for our sexy red-headed teen who has never felt these strange compulsions that her friends have described to her. She's had moments where like, you know, she feel or she saves somebody who is walking into the ocean or is about to jump off a cliff and they explain to her this feeling, this vision of a line in front of them that they must follow. Like they feel within them that they can't leave this line and she's never felt that until the day that she steps off of this plane and she follows this feeling in her chest as tears start to come down her eyes as she thinks that she is going to walk now to her death and she walks this line through a secret door off the tarmac and finds a computer and on that computer is an email. And that email is from the future. Because, like, that's how time works <laughs> or whatever. So she finds an email from her future self explaining mm -hmm. what she has witnessed and how this works and the moments that were changed that we've seen artsy flashback cuts to. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like how you see Brad Pitt pop up a bunch in... Fight Club before you're introduced to Tyler Durden. Anyway, we've seen all these flash cuts of the moments in this girl's life, and she finds this final message that basically says, I, it's me from the future. I did a time thing. I killed all your friends. Now you can live your own life. But to complete the loop on this day at this time, you need to go to this bookstore and purchase the book that gave me the knowledge to control this time. If you don't purchase a book in this exact location and it has some, you can't see it. It's, it's at the bottom of the email, but it says, you know, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> that comes back later. Trust me. If you get this book, everything will stay as it was. If you don't pick up the book 30 years from now, reality will collapse and the loop will begin again at spring break. Flash cut to 30 years later. <laughs> oh my God. Sexy redheaded teen walking down the street and she sees a bookstore and she takes a look in the window of the bookstore and sees her reflection. She realizes that because of all the horror she witnessed at her own hands, she still became a horrible version of herself that she didn't want to live with. And so the real hero the whole time, Andrew is mm. self-acceptance because when she <laughs> accepts that her future is her future no matter what she chooses to walk by the bookstore she walks by the bookstore and everything goes back Matt, to the beginning Matt, of the you movie made, you made butterfly effect you did. All the same. <laughs> you did it's not effect. it's legally not butterfly effect <laughs> I was going to say, I thought you said that you weren't making an MCU show because uh, you no, made an MCU this is... show and that self-acceptance was the hero the whole time. Well, okay. Yeah, that part. But that's pretty. I mean, that's just 2022, you know? That's like, true. That's it's not, fair. It's not really a It's Marvel either self-acceptance or my parents do actually love me. They just yeah. can't show it. Those are the yeah. two, the two yeah. genres we have now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Kyle. All right. So... We're in our final scene. It is Halloween night, a year after the initial accident. Quop, the, the monster that is Bennett's disfigured dead body, has killed all of the crew that was there that night that helped Quentin film or plan and execute the prank that killed him. They have all died in gruesome and ironic deaths. And each time we a new crew member dies, we see Quop movements get more fluid He's moving faster. At one point, he re he is, they, they comment like, oh, he was a track star. He, this is fastest he's ever ran. He's moving even faster than that now. He is just, <laughs> he has gone from undead to like supernatural power. It is hot. So it's Halloween night and Quentin is running away from Quop at the Halloween dance. He runs out back behind the school and they end up on the track. So they are being, he's being chased oh, no. on the track by Quap. 
<laughs> and there's, you know, there's a tussle. He gets knocked down. Um, and we end up somehow, like, up in the bleachers, up in the uh, announcer box of the high school football stadium, track, whatever. And realizing that he is never going to get away from this superhuman monster, this the supernatural power that has come to punish him for his dedication to fame and likes and clicks. Quentin gets out his phone in the announcer box, high above the stands, high up in the air. He makes his like final post on, on Instagram, his Instagram story, his confession of what happened the night of Bennett's death and ends that video with the full upload of the footage he has of him causing the death of Bennett. The post goes out. We see the numbers start to explode as Bennett's corpse like breaks down the door and busts in and they fight. They like, you know, throw each other around in this announcer box. And as the numbers of the post climb, uh, we start to see Bennett is getting weaker. He is now weakened by again, probably uh, Quentin's self acceptance of his mistake, but he's owning that his obsession was what led to Bennett's death. Quentin is able to toss Bennett's body once again out of the announcer box to the pavement below where it falls, crashes, mangled and bloodied again, motionless. Cut to a year in the future. He put so much work into this, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really proud. <laughs> we see Quentin on the side of the road in an orange jumpsuit. He's picking up trash. He's doing his community service. Uh, we understand that he's like he's he's paying for his crime of inadvertently causing this teenager's death. We hear a phone ring, and Quentin pulls a flip phone out of his pocket and says, "Hey, mom, yeah, I'm ready to get picked up. Community service is over for the day." Flip phone again, showing he has grown mm -hmm. as a person and right. has broken his cycle of addiction. He now knows that technology is bad too. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Um, spooky credits roll the end question, question mark yeah. Uh, yeah so that's a great segue <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna cut to a quick break I feel like I need to give Kyle a second to get some water <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna cut to a quick break but when we come back uh, we will this is not how we do super, super secret bonus question it isn't do you guys want to respond to Kyle before I say? Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> well, while you were while you were doing that, I was like, hmm, the the quap. The, am I getting this right? The quap thing is the killer. The the yeah. mangled quap man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the quap man. The, the quap man. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mister Quapman, Jonathan Quapman. The the record for at least that I could find from the internet. The internet doesn't lie. The fastest quap speed run is about a minute and a half to run 100 meters. Now, some quick track math puts that at about a 24-minute <laughs> mile. So I have questions about being hunted by this, I don't know, small, not actually dangerous thing, like a snail, a big snail. <laughs> How is this thing catching these other things? We, we took some liberties, Todd. <laughs> the progression is supposed to like mirror your progression with the game as you get better at the controls however it is not a perfect one-to-one -one correlation well, we sure. took some artistic license todd well I, that's why i said this is the fastest <laughs> i would say any of us layman jonathan quapmans would do a way worse job just like the board game battleship is not actually about an alien invasion like the movie is todd we took some creative license <laughs> that's the hill you want to die on kyle that's the comparison that is in fact the comparison i want to make yes all right it's fair <laughs> why don't you tell us more about your your pixelated movie that totally yes, was I a movie the whole that. time Todd. that's been stricken yeah. from the record i do kind of want to go back to you saying that it was a pixelated movie and you were going to stick that landing <laughs> i i don't i that was that listen that was two prompts ago and i've grown as a person that was and a whole I vape wish, yeti ago yeah that's i <laughs> Todd Todd has a flip phone now to show that he's grown as yeah. a person. Yeah, right. You know, looking looking back on my past a actions, I'm just a different person now, and I've changed. And it is as my friends, you have to accept that change and move on accordingly. Cool. We're gonna take a break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's super rad. So uh, all of you ended your pitches remarkably so with a the end question mark. 
So for our super secret bonus, we are going to resolve that question mark. And I'm going to ask you for our super secret bonus question. Give me the post credit stinger that shows that your killer is actually alive and will be alive and kicking for the sequel that will inevitably come out next Halloween. And we will answer that question right after this break. And now, a spectacular express spooky review read. This review titled, The Real Winner is the Goose We Made Along the Way. Guy Fieri, Rami Malek, and David Schwimmer walk into KK Slider's dive jazz bar. What's the punchline? I don't know. They don't know. But Andrew probably wrote a script for the two-hour conversation they share about how they got roped into the Debate This Studio Cinematic Universe. I present you to beat this. This review titled Untitled. One of the most fun zombie fighting in a mall episodes I've ever listened to. The Spooktacular Express is off to a great start. Loved MC DJ MC as the host. <laughs> this has been a spooktacular express spooky review read. Welcome back. Once again, our super secret bonus question is, let me unhighlight it. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> Explain the post credit stinger that reveals that your killer is in fact still alive and will be around for the sequel that will inevitably come out next Halloween. Todd. Yeah, credits roll. Um, everything's great. We see Skeeter Freeman, Lisa, and no more than two Chads are sitting in... <laughs> Uh, in the other lodge, because what is a ski resort? Wait, I thought but... you said that everybody dies. No, I said most of the sexiest teens die. Okay, Not all these of are the sexy teens. <laughs> Got mm, it. These are the unsexy teens. Got all it. the auxiliary teens yeah. died, but yeah. the, main, the main cast yeah. was protected. Uh -huh. I said we lost at least one Chad. <laughs> anyway, so they're sitting at a lodge because what in my mind is a ski resort than other than absolutely stacked with lodges, and so. In this lodge, we also see Eustace mourning the loss of his family's ice pick. Anyway, they all sip their hot chocolate because that's what you do in a lodge. <laughs> and the camera begins to pan out the window as it turns towards the cliff face of Radical Mountain, where it goes and peers over the cliff face, which seems dangerous and logistically problematic to have a cliff face that close to a lodge. But anyway, <laughs> and it pans down and we see the frozen, lifeless body of the Sasquatch. As we're panning in on it, we see the right claw begins to twitch before it slowly starts moving ice crunching off of its body towards its chest. It wraps its hands around the ice pick and pulls it from its chest and then crushes it in its claws before the Sasquatch, bloodied and battered and frozen, does that really cool Undertaker sit-up thing. And when it does, <laughs> it then lunges at the camera as the camera goes dark. Okay. And that's it, because <laughs> you cannot kill the, the Sasquatch. It's impossible. Uh, Matt. Okay, so, movie fades to black. Credits roll. Again, not an MCU thing, but a post credit scene starts. In <laughs> the newly repaired timeline, we cut to a middle-aged man in a dusty old bookstore, thumbing relentlessly through the science and philosophy section until he finds a copy of The Philosophy of Time Travel, an updated textbook by Dr. Roberta Sparrow. Do you remember the textbook from the trailer? That was the textbook that was from the, the trailer? That was the textbook, oh, was that the textbook from, the from the trailer. trailer? Yeah. 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 He pulls the book from the shelf, slumps to the floor, and hugs it to his chest. Then he pulls out a picture of a girl on the plane, smiling under an orange hoodie, with big headphones over top of them. He cries and laughs maniacally. We fade to black. 
Okay, so there were a lot of things from the trailer that I don't think people <laughs> remember. <laughs> That's fine. The trailer was like a whole video game concept to go, Matt. You're going to have to really catch well, me up. The girl with the headphones was the one that walked into the jet tur the turbine. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're asking uh, the right questions. So it, it, it's a new, it's a new victim. The old yeah, man. A new loop has started. And the it's, old man picks who loops. And it's Final Destination Two. Someone yeah. else watched the 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 VHS tape. Yeah. Other horror movies. Someone else is Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> Somebody has the the Grudge video, like what, or the Ring video, whatever. Like, yeah, it's a new guy has the bad power, and there's gonna be another loop and. You know what? Sublime 2, also known as Sublime <laughs> 2 Joints in the Morning, is oh, going man. to <laughs> yes. be uh. the same actors dying in different ways on the same spring break trip. Woo! Sequel. Nice. Woo. Yeah, thanks, sequels. All right. <laughs> Kyle. All right. So, credits end. Music starts to fade. No animals were harmed in the making of this film disclaimer. Scrolls up to the to the top of the screen. Natch. We open on a, a image of a computer looking at Quentin's now abandoned Instagram account. We see the last video as he uploaded his confession, the footage of the accident happening, et cetera, et cetera. And we see the date is one year Halloween, one year past the the events of the movie. When all of a sudden we a notification pops up on on the device viewing this Instagram feed. Quentin underscore Watterson has posted for the first time in a while. We see a hand open the post, and it's the same shot of drop-off point, and we hear the uncontrolled flailing of limbs and a shambling body shuffle into image, cut to black. Quap will return in Quap 2 re-uploaded. <laughs> <laughs> good. I like that you've created a monster that skitters exclusively. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's more like it's more like erratic knee jerks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like, do you ever see those TikToks where the guys uh pretend to be NPCs from Skyrim? Yes. Yeah. Where they 100%. just like flail their arms everywhere after they pretend <laughs> mm -hmm. to be dead. I was going going for a little bit of like the the girl from the grudge like how she like mm. yeah, moves up that that skitters. uncanny i said skitters yeah. yeah you were going for girl from the grudge but i got more voldo is what i got more than <laughs> <laughs> like your your killer is gonna come at me knees first and i'm just gonna be like whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey. <laughs> he's gonna knee you to death uh incredible all right let's close up these arguments because we gotta pick one of these bad boys and it's probably not going to be Todd. <laughs> well, all right. I'm going to give you the 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 runner here for the promo, and that is Ski to Freedom, French Fry. Don't pizza your way to a theater near you. Todd, Excellent. that's just my tagline with different with different verbs. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> he did go first, so legally it's his. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a great tagline, but. If I did have a great tagline, it would probably have a sublime joke. And it might go something like, blood in the sand, blood in the time, she'll find freedom 40 years later. Which is a 40 ounces to freedom yeah, joke, right, the best right. that freedom. I can come up with on short notice. <laughs> I'm going to give you credit because you very clearly made that up on the fly. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I super did. I Right as Todd finished, I googled sublime songs and 40 ounces <laughs> yeah. to freedom was the first one I saw. Yeah, man, this is a timey-wimey movie, and those are really in right now, and it's Halloween season, and slashers are in right now, and, you know, you put those two boxes together, maybe it is the butterfly effect, but nobody's seen that movie in 20 years, so... You could have just stopped that sentence halfway through, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, I've got... it. It's... I got your class, classic horror monster... Um, supernatural elements. <laughs> Wait, is it, the Quap Man is the classic horror monster. It is now. It's an instant right. classic, Todd. <laughs> he does skitter. <laughs> he does skitter. He does That's skitter. Fair. And we've got a morality tale that punishes teens for doing teenage normal teenage things. Mm. I don't know what else you want out of out of your typical. 80s-esque slasher flick, Andrew. Quite literally nothing. I think I've got the obvious mm -hmm. choice here. Yes. Yeah, well, I assumingly have some very important train decisions to make. So 
I'm going to take a step out back into this here Rainforest Cafe because we've established the Rainforest Cafe is express. Uh, good vibes. Do the thing. Do the thing. Yeah, um, Matt, I really like Line Rider and I really like Sublime. So you, you nice. took things that I, I don't really like horror <laughs> movies. So like, you know, yeah, well. those are, that's the, the compliment sandwich. Yeah, I, I really like what you did here today. I too thought about Line Rider as my very first selection. Um, I'll just get this out here instead of saving for the post show. But I was like, nah, you can't make a horror movie out of it. Well, at that time <laughs> I thought you can't make a horror game out of it. But then I clearly... It was just telling myself you couldn't make a horror movie out of it either. Mm. So I was happy what you did. And like I said, Sublime is one of those things that I grew up with it because all three of my sisters really like Sublime. And so that was fun for me what you did. Kyle, yours is silly. <laughs> yours is silly. And and I never once thought Quap was the answer, but I think you did a good job <laughs> giving us this The Ring-esque monster. And... Most importantly, you've left us now with a new barometer of judging things. Instead of do it poop, we now have do it skitter. Um, <laughs> and we also we also have the the add on to that. Do it scare the teens. And so, um, Kyle, you did answer appropriately. Yes, do it skitter. And yes, it do if scare skitter the teens. and it do scare the teens. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Todd, I really enjoyed your whole thing today, because I'm not going to lie, I really like Ski Free. I love <laughs> Ski Free. Holy shit. Um, my grandma's computer growing up as a little kid had access to two games. I don't know why we only had access to Wolfenstein and Ski Free, but those were my options. Mm -hmm. So I played a lot of Ski Free. Because your grandparents had good taste in games. Right. <laughs> you got it, right? I played a lot of Ski Free, and Skeeter Freeman is genius. I didn't want to point it out because I already gave you enough good things, but <laughs> Skeeter Freeman is really good. I liked that a lot. Also, a horror movie set in Ski Lodge. Sounds great. I'm in. I love it. Right. Great time. Kyle, holy shit, the work <laughs> you did to make Quop work. Like, if nothing else, I commend you for that. I really liked your victim slash killer being a reanimated corpse who quops around <laughs> because it made me think of the end of Five Nights at Freddy's Five Sister Location. So mm. that's what I was going for, Matt. I'm glad you picked up on that. I did. You got me there, man. <laughs> so yeah, good times all around. I would watch both of these movies for sure. Nice. Um, Todd, I really like, I really, really like the, the Yeti from Ski Free as a horror movie villain and I am very confident that if you had read the prompt properly, you would have brought <laughs> us a fantastic, fully fleshed out horror movie using the Yeti from from Ski Free as the the monster. Um, you also set us up for the vape Yeti. He's coming for your jewels, mm -hmm. which um, <laughs> can't thank you enough for giving us that setup. Thank you, Matt. You you did Donnie Darko and the butterfly effect. But with Line Rider, and <laughs> the puzzle came together. I wasn't sure the puzzle was going to come together <laughs> by the end. And the puzzle got there, and it, good job. Hey, thanks. <laughs> so uh, I was back in the train meeting You were in the lounge. Rainforest Cafe. That's where, the, that's where the, tra the Train <laughs> Forest Cafe. The and, Train uh, Forest <laughs> Cafe. <laughs> Get oh that shit God. out of here. <laughs> yeah. I was in the train force cafe, and uh, unfortunately, I was approached by our train legal department, uh, who informed me that we might have some potential train litigation <laughs> on our hands here. Now, uh, there are two of these three answers that individually are not a problem, but combined together, they represent one very particular movie. It's not the butterfly effect. Famously litigious uh, aut auteur director M. Night Shyamalan has informed us that the combination of Todd and Matt's together by saying nature is the enemy and also uh, weird, mysterious situations where people are killing themselves is pretty much the happening. 2008's the happening. It is the happening. Mark it is the happening. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, therefore, in order to mitigate tra some potential train litigation, <laughs> mitigate the litigation, we're going to give this one to Kyle. Hell yeah, Kyle. Uh, for a lot of reasons. So, I'm most, so happy. Most predominantly because this time Kyle did the most work and therefore gets the reward. <laughs> well, Kyle, Kyle's just sweating. 
right now. He's so <laughs> yeah, sweaty. Yeah. I'm so sweaty. We'll, we'll deliver you a couple bottles of train water. It's oh, not good. <laughs> it's actually water endorsed by the band Train. It's quite <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> It's called Drops oh, of Jupiter. My... Yeah, it's oh, Drops of Jupiter. There there was, that was and, in there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, bump set spike. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to Debate This. You can follow along with the arguments on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Debate This Cast or on our website at debatethiscast.com. Don't forget about our Spooktacular Express Patreon drive and the first ever Spooktacular Reviewathon. You still have a few days left of October to write a review of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, whatever else podcatcher you want to use. Just tag us in, in, in a screenshot on any social media. Hell, you can email us, debatethiscast at gmail if you really want to. We will include any remaining reviews on a few special features that we've got coming out here as we get closer to Halloween. They may or may not be Dungeons and Dragons themed, so keep an eye out for that. Also, do you like Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, sure you do. You listen to this shit, so of course you do. <laughs> Venn diagrams a circle, baby. Uh, join our Patreon at any tier before November 11th to not only get invited to the the Discord, to get access to the premium feed, but also to get a free Halloween-themed debate this tchotchke sent directly to you in real meat space. Until next time, I'm Andrew Henderson. Is that window actually open till no- November 11th or November 1st, like is written in the notes, and like, I when said, October ends? I said what I said. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of a movie video game situation, Kyle. We just got to gloss <laughs> yeah. over it and move on. Yeah, There will be no receipts. To, to catch me on that. Until next time, I'm Andrew Henderson. I'm Todd. Respect Vape Yeti or get turned into <laughs> Spaghetti Thomas. <laughs> I'm Matt, the Vape Yeti, also known as the A Box Moddable Snowman. <laughs> and I'm Kyle. There's vomit on his sweater already. Vape Yeti Harper. I was saying thanks for debating with us. And if you think you're wrong, you can come fight Vape Yeti behind the swing sets, nerds. I've got another one for the post show. Wait for it. Ooh.